<laughs> a little bit. Let's yeah, let's yeah, and I, yeah, and I'm doing a special training with my sister on the TCAs. Um, my she happens to be my partner on TCA, so she can um, start, you know, doing more of those as well and get them set up for me. So um, we'll be doing that this weekend. So you'll see a couple of a uh, couple more TCAs. Maybe I'll get my ten done this weekend. I'm so excited. I love it. I love it. Well, we are live. Welcome. Like I start with my cop. What's up? Welcome to the Friday Mortgage Coach Mastermind. Every Friday, 9 o'clock Pacific, we are here to bring value, answer questions, cover topics. More and more as I travel, I have a lot of people that tell me how much they love this. Uh, some watch it on Facebook Live. You know, it seems like that's trending. So this is broadcasted in our group on Facebook Live. Some watch it live on Zoom and some watch it in our YouTube channel and watch the recording. No matter where you watch it, just know that if you ask us questions down below, if it's live, we'll try to answer them live. And if it's not live, we'll still try to make sure we answer them. Either we'll text answer them or we'll answer them in the next call. Um, so with me today, it's been a while since I've had Jen Duplessis. Uh, Jen is a speaker, coach, formerly a rock star top producer, but now she's helping other loan officers become rock star top producers. What's up, Jen? Yep. Yep. I'm so happy to be back. I miss you guys. You know, it's so, it's so hard occasionally, you know, it's just so, it's just hard traveling and stuff, but I'm just happy to be back. I'm happy to share. And I, you know, I, again, encourage everybody, you know, ask questions. We're here to help. So, please ask your questions, no matter what the topic is that we're talking about, ask your question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because we're here to help you, you know, and everybody has different wants, different needs, different problems. So we're here to do that. And then we've got rock star, $100 million producer, Michelle Town. What's up, Michelle? Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. You know, Michelle is, is a, you know, a black belt in Darren Hardy productivity strategies, you know, so she is always going to bring that how to be uber efficient, uber effective. Uh, Michelle, I came in late to the conversation and some people, you know, just started watching, but tell us how you're doing this month. What, how much production are you going to do? Uh, so we ended up last month closing 8 million and we've got 28 million prep to close in the month of April. And we are all, as you can see, the dark rings that are our eyes, we're doing our best to stay productive, but 28 million is a lot to manage. We know with a small group. So we're just breathing and smiling, and we, we listened to, um, I can't remember, um, I was Jeremy Forsey, I uh, posted something over the weekend, and on when I need to unwind, I don't laugh at me, you guys, but I listen to Mortgage Coach when I need to unwind, and so I listened to one of his things as I was unwinding, and he made a comment about this, uh, the, uh, the salmon and the bear, and oh, I started yes. laughing, and I go, so Monday morning, I rock star up to the team and I said, hey guys, I said, I don't know if you heard this. I said, I'm going to send you guys all this video. I said, but when the salmon are, are swimming, the bear do not sleep. So I said, guess what? We're not sleeping. We're going to hibernate in the winter. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm actually going to move that to the front of our best of 2019 playlist because it, it's a rock star. In fact, is it, is it called, did I make that the title? You know, um, Oh, no. I mean, actually, I did move it to the front. It's the, the title of that video, by the way, everybody, is When Things Get Harder, We Need to Get Better. And, mm -hmm. and, and Jeremy says a quote, uh, you know, when the salmon are running, the bears don't sleep. And, and that is what time it is. You know, so one, watch that video. It's, it's an awesome video. And it looks like a lot of people are watching it because it's, you know, got over 500 views and it's less, it's less than a week old. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So actually, that's a good segue into a topic that I wanted to make sure we covered. I'm going to share my screen just in case anyone uh, is not already in the know on this. So, uh, you know, here's, here's the deal. I'm going to go into announcements. We've got five announcements. Uh, one of Michelle Towns' topics that she wanted to make sure we talked about is at the top. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but I think the topic that I want to talk about right now, right about now is this game that we're calling the 30-10 um, game. And it, it really did, while we didn't name it that in the Jeremy call, you know, it became clear that we were at a time in a season, spring home buying season has, you know, kicked off, you know, the race has started, uh, rates made a dip. So that has opened up, you know, a lot of energy and passion around calling your past clients. 
And, and I was, you know, last week I was in San Diego and two awesome loan officers, they've both done over a thousand TCAs. So they're, you know, they're advisors, they are mortgage coaches. And, and, and they were, they just, they were fired up. They were, you know, they just this energy of, you know, happiness and excitement, which I am not hearing from everybody in the mortgage industry, but I am from people that are getting after it. And if you watch this one minute video, you know, it's literally, it's not two minutes. It's one minute and 27 seconds. They're, they're holding each other accountability. They're having an accountability program for the month where they have to make 30 outbound calls a day. That's 150 a week. And, and then they're both already doing 10 plus CCAs a week. I mean, they, they have that as a habit. So we made a game of that. And I wanted to make sure one, everybody knows about that and watches this call. And then to play it forward on my Tuesday interview with Wally Elderberry, he said, Dave, I'm killing it. And I'm going to give a thousand dollars to whoever you pick is the winner of the month. Um, so the rules of the contest are here. Wanted to make sure everybody knows about that. And, and to make it simple, I mean, I'm not, cause I've had a lot of questions around how am I managing this? Do I need to do 30 a day? How do you know if I did them or not? I mean, here's the deal. We're going to do this on the honor system. It's 150, you know, outbound calls and it's 10 a week. So no, I'm not going to manage whether you do it every day. Um, I do want to have someone vouch for you. So in order to be part of the contest, you do need to make a post and share what your results are, preferably weekly. And then at the end of the month, we can audit and we'll know how many TCAs you did. So before we announce a winner, you know, we're going to make sure the number of TCAs you did, um, you know, if you're a few off, we're not going to micromanage you, but we're going to make sure that, hey, this person's doing what they're saying they're doing. Uh, and we're going to announce a winner, a thousand bucks. Wally's going to send a thousand dollars. I know Todd from Win by Noon is, I don't know what he's doing, but he's going to throw a little more um, value on the winner. And I wanted to make sure that was a topic. So first, if you have a question and you're on the call live, comment below. Two, if you're playing the game, you know, like if you are making X number of calls and tracking it, you're making X number of TCAs and tracking it, share your results below. You know, I would love to see who's playing the game that's on the call right now. And uh, look forward to announcing a winner. And um, more importantly than that, I'm looking forward to seeing all the success that comes out of this group in the month of April so that it really helps you rocket launch into that spring home buying season in May. So uh, I'll open it up. Uh, Michelle, any, any comments or thoughts on the contest? Did any, anything you have to add? No, I loved it. I actually watched that one. I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday. You'd posted it. Couldn't sleep at night. So I, I, I read it and I was laughing and I go, I was watching these guys do their, you know, competition and somebody else said they were doing, I don't know if it was Jeremy's one too, that, that he had done, I don't know, 17, or maybe it was these guys, 17 or 18 already um, TCAs as well as, you know, outbound calls and stuff. So, um, you know, something I'm just going to remind everybody about what um, Jeremy said as well, which was pretty important, especially in this refinance boom, is he said, I, I, it, what caught my eye on this was he said he wanted to be second on the, on the call. So I actually... Um, I actually really, I had to listen to it because I go, why would you want to be second and not first calling your client? And it was very interesting. So if you haven't listened to it, listen to it. But he's mm -hmm. right. Don't send out a mass email saying interest rates have dropped because you're not going to be able to serve your database. I mean, if you've got a database of 20, you'll be able to serve your database. If you've got a database of 300, you're not going to be able to do it. And why not make it feel more special and, you know, create the TCA and say, hey, I wanted to let you know, I'm sure you've heard rates have dropped. I prepared this presentation for you. It has so much more power than sending out a blanket blast email that everybody you know, knows that it's a blanket blast email. Yeah, well, and my big takeaway from what Jeremy said, it wasn't about first or second because, hey, I think personally, I could have debated with him. I think you want to be first, second, and third. I think it's a campaign. So I would have debated that. But what I would not debate with him is don't be noise. You know, don't, don't say what everybody else is saying. Uh, there, I don't think there's any debate. I mean, you know, say it differently. And then I do have a coaching thought for the community. I've given this coaching to Dan Keller, and I think he's going to, you'll see in some of his upcoming messages. But I see a lot of loan officers just focusing on the payment savings. You know, oh, you can save $100, you can save $200. And, and I'm not 
want to make sure everybody's clear. I'm not saying don't put that in your marketing because the, the families in the industry is trained to, I want a lower rate and I want a lower monthly payment. So they are trained and to not, you know, cover the monthly savings, I think it, it, it is a good thing to do. But what they're not trained to do and what you as a mortgage coach are uniquely powered to do is go beyond that. Show them the power of that monthly savings over five years because your competition is not going to do that. And it's a bigger number. So, mm-hmm. so whatever the monthly savings is, blow it up over five years. That's attractive. It's like, hey, rates have gone down and that's X a month and that's X over five years. And, and, then, and then do one more thing. Show them the power of that savings. Hey, if you took that monthly savings and prepaid your mortgage, that could help you retire. I could help you pay off your house eight years earlier and help you save $134,000 in interest. So like blow it up. And now, and now instead of just telling the world that, hey, rates went down three, three quarters to half a percent and that means you can save $100 to $300. No, you're out there saying that means you can save $36,000 to $5,000 over five years. And then if you reinvested that, that could be retiring 10 years earlier. So, so I think, you know, my coaching to the mortgage industry, and, and I'm not saying to say all that in one, one message. I mean, maybe you have a, a video and you do say all that, but it's a campaign. And I, I do think it's an opportunity for you as a mortgage coach to educate your past customers and your realtors that I am not just the three quarters of a percent rate monthly savings. I am the person that's going to help you build wealth with real estate. I'm going to help you save money on your interest over the course of your life. So that, so that now at the point of sale, they're not just looking at you, you know, you're, you're worth paying a quarter of a percent more in rate and a thousand dollar check. So I just think as a, as a mortgage coach, you gotta, you gotta deliver such an amazing experience that people would be willing to pay big money for it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Jen, I noticed you jumped on the camera anything you want to pile on and then I want to hear your thoughts on this, um, Michelle. Yeah. And I'm just going to, I'm going to say something pretty quickly. Um, you know, you bring up a really good point, uh, you know, in the mortgage coach community, what we do is we compare ourselves to someone who's just doing a loan estimate. Right. And we say, this is what the TCA does for us. it, It separates us. But if all you're doing is the TCA and comparing the payment, it's very short-term thinking. And the reason that the TCA is so powerful in uh, what we've talked about before is really addressing this whole, this entrance holding and exit strategy for clients before, during, and after. As an expert in this field, and if you're going to be their coach in their mortgage and have that mortgages under management program, you know, over a long period of time, um, it's short-term thinking simply to prepare a TCA and highlight payment savings and rate. It just is, it's way short-term thinking. So I just want to remind everyone to please remember to do the long haul. And Dave, you already addressed it, you know, over five years, whatever the period is, but um, make sure that you're in alignment with what their uh, goals are so that you're not preparing, Hey, in five, you know, you can save X amount of dollars over five years and, you know, uh, pay down your mortgage, paying down their mortgage might not be their goal. So I I just want to address that with everybody. Don't do what you want or think they need, do what they actually need. And then be the advisor to say, you know, that's a really good idea, but here's another option. So I just want to remind everybody, please don't do think short term thinking just because you have a total cost analysis. There's more to it than just preparing it and highlighting those two areas. So I'm going to add one more thought and then Michelle, let's bring you in. So I want to make sure you guys heard that because I think the most, the most important thing that I would say, if every one of your past customers and realtors doesn't think of you and they think of you as I'm the wealth with real estate and not only do I show monthly payment, but I show, you know, building wealth over five and 10 years, that needs to become your brand. That's how you're looked at as, you know, and again, we call it the total cost analysis you call it whatever you want, the wealth report, you know, the wealth mortgage report. Um, Although I do think that the the total cost analysis is a valuable phrase all on its own. It's unique and it's different. 
Uh, and then I, I think it's important what, Mesh, what um, Jen just said. While I think the reduce your debt, it's the easiest to start a conversation. Everybody gets that concept. Prepay your mortgage, save interest. That's the Dave Ramsey strategy. And then it's, in, but it is important because not everybody is playing the Dave Ramsey game. A lot of people are playing the Rick Edelman game where it's let's invest that money. And, and yes, it is true that if you invest that money well and you don't lose money, you'll probably build wealth with real estate faster by playing the Rick Edelman game. But to Jen's point, that's not our job. We are not the financial advisors. We want to make sure we're educating the family and then letting the family pick their strategy. Well, and not just the family, the wealth team. So, so that brings up one more thing. I'm not going to open this rabbit trail until we hear from Michelle. But when I interviewed Wally this Friday, you know, the, 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 we titled the call Wealth Team Leadership. I do want to talk about that because that also plays into this. So remember, guys, if you have questions, put them down below. We'll either answer them live or we'll answer them um, post the call. Michelle, any thoughts? Yes, I will tell you my very probably first five years of being an originator, I did everything wrong. I, um, my, when I finally hired a coach, what they told me was I was a teller. I was a, I was a teller, not a seller. So I would tell people what I thought was best for them. And I wasn't getting a lot of traction. I'd still get clients, but I wasn't getting a lot of traction. So, you know, over the last 10 years, what I've been doing is just revamping and making sure that I'm listening to what the client's needs are. Um, an example this week, client calls and says, you know, I'm, I'm with my credit union. I want to know, you know, my agent told me I needed to call you, you know, I've already got my credit union. And I just said, I, I just listened and I said, okay, you know, no problem. I said, this is like a first date. You know, we want to make sure we're seeing if we we're a right match for each other. And when we started, when I listened to what she said and I started understanding her personality as I'm listening to her, how she drives her life and drives her family and everything. And I just say, you know, hi, Teresa, you know, sounds like um, if you take all of your money out of your bank with this, I said, would this be a fair assessment? If you took all your money out of your bank to get that principal and interest down to 2,400, how's that going to make you feel not having any money left? And she goes, I'm going to be stressed out. And I said, okay, if I could show you a way that you can put less money down and let that money that's sitting in the bank, you know, lock it into a CD that's, you know, earning two to 3% or even putting in something more aggressive, that's going to yield you $3,700 a month or more and bridge that gap between the $2,400 payment and the $3,100 payment for the next 20 years. Would, would that be worth a conversation? And she said, absolutely. And that's what I used my TCA for. I said, let me show you what it looks like. Here's what the credit union has you on now to hit that $2,400 a month payment. Here's what it's going to look like if you put some of the money in the bank. And I use that reinvestment strategy that we were so wonderfully um, taught on a couple weeks ago. So I, I appreciate that. But the, I, I guess my point would be, listen to what they want. Don't tell them what you want. I mean, there are some clients that you'll, t you'll show them a million ways that taking the higher interest rate and, and not paying points is much better for them in the long run. And they're not going to listen to you. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to shove anything down anybody's throat anymore. I said, I just, I said, I always tell people it's my job to show you what the options are. It's your job to pick the options that's best for you and your family. I, I so love that. You know, are you telling or are you selling? So powerful. And, and I would add, you know, add to that, um, tell versus sell. We used to say that all the time. Um, but now I think it's, uh, you know, tell versus sell, but, and then now it's serve. I don't know how to, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that. It's serving, not selling, right? We're serving their needs and we're edu selling. We're educating them through the sales process by serving them. Does that make sense? It, it does. And, it doesn't um, make, totally yeah. does. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just need, again, mm -hmm, I keep saying that slow down to speed up. We're so excited to just get them, got them, got them sold them, locked, got it. And then they, then they rescind. And I'm hearing a lot of that too is, you know, I have a loan. I've been I'm knee deep in it. Now they're going someplace else at the last minute. So just slow down to speed up. It, it's so worth it. We, we sound like broken records, but it's really important. 
Yeah, no, it's it's so important. Microphone. And and I want to I want to pull out a um, a comment that Bliss just said because she obviously listened to Jeremy's interview and she's taken action. So she said, FYI, I'm doing a video Monday titled, when is it not a good time to refi? It'll be a little different, educational, saving a bit on money that costs a lot in the best interest. TCA will be my best way to help them understand it. So, so that Her. is a great headline, you know, cause everybody else out there is saying refi, 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 rates are going down. And so to say, hey, when's it not? Or, or how about this? What are the biggest mistakes people make when they're doing refis or, or what, what is the biggest thing that most lenders don't tell you, but I'm going to tell you now, or, or what's the thing that every lender hides when they're doing a refi. And you can make the case that most lenders will never tell you the cost over five years. You know, they don't want you to mm -hmm. think about it that way. Most lenders will never talk about prepaying the mortgage and how that actually saves your money. Because think about it, if you're a family, you, you know, like we're loan officers. We don't care if people pay off their mortgage eight years earlier. And, and I, I don't even think servicers do. You know, it, services don't want you to like refi it within, you know, 18 months. And, and most servicers, I doubt whether they ever want you to refinance it. But services don't care if you pay $200 a month and, and do that. That's the least of their problems. Their big problems are don't refi out of this thing in 18 months and, and kill my portfolio value. So, but I can, I can <laughs> tell you most consumers, you know, you can really position yourself like I'm a hero, you know, by, doing, by really promoting and marketing the superpower you have at Mortgage Coach, you in a matter of 20 seconds, maybe 15 seconds could figure out what $250 prepayment is on a $400,000 loan. That's like a 20 second thing for you to do as a mortgage coach. If, if a, a regular loan officer out there, family goes, oh, what, how much interest could I save if I prepaid my mortgage by $250 a year? They're like, like, why are you asking me that? They wouldn't even know how to get the answer to that. And you could do that in 20 seconds. So if, if you are not creating videos, if you are not promoting that superpower that you have, that 95% of the mortgage industry would absolutely be stumped if they got asked those questions or, or what's, what's my cost over five years. If, if a loan officer asks your typical rate quoting fee worksheeting mortgage loan officer, well, what's the cost over, over, you know, the, the seven years I'm going to be in this home. If they got that question, they'd be like, shit, I don't know. Uh, if you're a mortgage coach, 10 seconds. So guys, Play, play that hard. Jen, anything else you want to add? Yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm listening in. I love it. I love it because, I mean, it's, it's a, this is a very, very, very fine line, you know, between, it's just a fine line. And I think what we've identified here is that there's three categories. There's the traditional LE loan officer rate quoter. There's the TCA preparer. And then there's the mortgage coach who uses the TCA in the right way. Well, you make a good point there. You know, we'll have to think about how we do, how we bring that into our training. So Michelle, before we expand the topics here, um, anything you want to add to this? No, I think we've done a great job. Great job, everybody. I love it. Okay. So as we close out this, call this topic, and we're going to close the topic. It's all about the mortgage coach, 30, 10 game. 30 means 150 calls a week, that's minimum to play the game. 10 TCAs a week, that's minimum to play the game. And you gotta post your results and your activity in this group. So you are watching this in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. If you are playing this game and you wanna win that, that $1,000 from Wally, that gift from um, Todd Bookspan, and who knows what other gifts will be thrown into the contest, let us know. Uh, Jen, you want you want to say something? Yep. Okay. So two things. I'm going to throw in a gift. I'm going to throw in a gift. Jen's going to throw in a gift. <laughs> right. So the win. So the winner. I would like to um, give them a one hour complimentary session with me. Boom. An hour with Jen. 
uh, where she is going to be giving yep. you as much so value that's a 600, as she can. That's a six hundred dollar value. That's almost that's almost the amount of the thing. So I'd like to throw that in. Um, and, and because I know that there are some people on the call who might have uh, put a wall up saying, well, I don't know who to call. I don't know. I can't call 30 people. I want to give you some ideas. So first of all, call five people that you just closed loans with, the last five loans, right? Because, and, and I'm just going to say, call them and ask them if they have any friends that, that um, would be interested in maybe refinancing if you don't want to call them about refinancing now. Call your five past closings. Call five realtors um, that you're working with on a regular basis. Call five realtors you've never worked with. Call five referral partners. And then call five clients ask, or about their birthday or anniversary of their loan. Because you've got that, okay? Somebody's having a birthday. Someone's having a um, uh, an anniversary of their loan. So it's five, five of your past clients for their birthday or to do a mortgage review. Five referral partners, non-realtor, five referral partners, realtor, five past clients, and five past clients, uh, five realtors you've never worked with. That's 25 right there. And then you can expand from that and say one more extra of this. And the other. I just want to give you the ideas on who the people are that you're going to call the 30. This is super easy to call 30 people. Super, yeah. super, super easy. I, I love it. So here's what I want to do before we go off this topic. I have a gift to throw in after you, you inspired me. So I'm going to throw in another gift uh, to the winner. And Michelle, I want you thinking right now of more ideas of people to call. And then I'm going to do a round yeah. of who I think you should call. And then we're going to transfer topics. So here's what you inspired me, Jen. So I'm going to throw in an hour. So hour with me, Dave Savage. Now I, I have to one up you, Jen, because that's worth a thousand dollars. Uh, and I'm going to push oh. you. <laughs> it's not really about that. I was just letting I, you know I, that I, I it's know. worth, having, you know. It's, well, first of all, yeah. I think you are a $1,000 an hour coach. So it is a thousand. She's worth a thousand. I'm worth a thousand. And really, at the end of the day, it's worth a whole lot more than that. Because I, I know I come to every conversation that I'm going to make you more money. Uh, you're going to have more. You're going to have fun in the conversation. And you're going to get ideas that will build your lifestyle. So I actually think an hour with me is worth, I don't know, a lot of money, more than a thousand, but I do value my time at a thousand dollars an hour. I mean, that's just kind of, I was trained by Tim Brahim back in the day. So, you know, like as I'm, what am I doing? What am I delegating? I'm a thousand dollar an hour um, person and, and I'm doing thousand dollar an hour stuff. So you got an hour with me. Uh, whoever wins, and you got an hour with Jen. Uh, and um, Michelle, ideas to get 30. And let's, let's not think of it as daily. Ideas to make 150 outbound calls a week and do uh, – and remember, everybody, this is a minimum. Like, I'm expecting there's going to be people that are doubling those numbers, but it's a minimum of 150, and it's a minimum of t 10 TCAs. I know loan officers that do, you know, 50 TCAs a week. Now, um, again, those are mega teams doing mega business. But Michelle, what are um, a couple call ideas? Well, first of all, I'm going to one down you guys. Um, <laughs> I will say if anybody is in the San Diego area that wins, I'm not going to make it about business. I'm going to follow my coaches and Darren Hardy's and everybody's about Feeling that other part of your your void, the fun part, and I'm going to say I will invite you to my house and I will put you you and your kids on my horses and I will you can go for a ride and oh um, I will and, and I like horses and dogs though if you don't you can't come but um, if you are in the San Diego area or going to be in the San Diego area I will happily have you come to my house and brush my horses feed them carrots if you're scared of them you won't be. Um, but something to kind of feel that other void instead of the work void. So oh my there God. you go. Wait a minute. Wait, um, Michelle, wait, wait, time out, Michelle. I want you to know, I want you to know, I got goosebumps. You totally <laughs> crushed us. And did, did you hear that? So whoever's playing this contest, not only do you get money, but you get to come hang out with Michelle Town and, and, and ask enjoy, ask questions, enjoy horses and do life. And, and she has roosters. She has chickens. Uh, I mean, it, dogs. dogs. Oh my God. Well, first of all, I'm going to, after this call, like I'm going to go take a vacation at your house, you know, 
Okay, so. perfect. Come on down. Live very, right. very simply. But um, as far as who to call, I think Jen really hit it. Um, you know, uh, past clients, friends, families. Um, and you're right, birthdays. I, I want to tell you, I, I do birthday cards, but my calendar tells me when a birthday comes up every morning. It takes me two minutes. And I text the borrower on their birthday from my phone. And I have a little blanket text, happy birthday. Just hope you're having an amazing day. Make it great. And you, you're not, you won't be, I mean, actually, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how many responses you get from people. So um, I do the birthday cards as well as on their birthday, actually text them. So um, easy way to make a phone call. Um, easy way to pick up the phone and call a client that you haven't talked to in a while. Um, you know, there are so many, there are six or seven people you can call, probably eight on every transaction. So there's not a lack of calls, but just make sure you're calling with a, with a, you know, some kind of purpose in mind. Don't, you know, and don't script it too much. Um, am I okay? Yeah, you're great. Okay. Yeah, keep it going. Okay. Heart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, heart. Oh, heart. Yeah, have heart. Okay. I'm like, I thought she was telling me my something was showing, and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> so have a heart. You know, do you know? We always call them for business because if you call them for business every single time, what's going to happen is when they see your phone ring, they're going to ignore you. So make sure it's in the passing. Hey, you know, I, I just want to let you know, I, I know you heard rates drop. I want to let you know, I already took a look at that for you. Um, if you want me to show you what I found, great, but I, you know, I'm not sure that I would recommend it right now, but how's the family doing? I know, how's your dad doing it? Remember he was in the hospital last year. Just remember, and that's where your CRM is going to be really important on reminding you of what those things do. So have a heart. Yeah, so I, I'm going to I'm gonna close out with a couple things. So one, I noticed that Jeremy Forcier is watching us. He just joined us on Facebook Live. Jay Force, if you want, I just texted you a, a link. And if you want to share anything from the road, uh, don't be driving. But if you're not driving and you want to join us and add a little Jeremy energy, you, you are invited. Uh, Kai McBride, what's up, Kai? Just joined us. What's up, buddy? Uh, so Facebook Live is crushing it today. I, I do want to give folks a heads up. We're going to be kicking off a new mortgage coach show called Rate Watch Live. And I'm, I'm not going to promise what day, how we're going to do it, but Dan Rawich, who does our daily morning video, um, has a lot of passion and things to share with the community. So, you know, what, maybe he'll do it daily. Maybe he'll do it a few times a week. But it will be right when he gets done recording that daily show, he's going to push, he's going to open up Zoom. He's going to push it live into the Mortgage Coach community. And he's just going to go live, you know, and just freestyle with everybody. You know, the, the theme will be, you know, how to use market insights as a competitive advantage. But him and I both agree and believe that you, you, need, to, you need to be a, a mortgage wizard. You need, to, you need to be an expert at creative finance strategies. And that means you need to be an expert at knowing those strategies and delivering them with Mortgage Coach. So stay tuned. Rate Watch Live is coming to you soon. But, but here's my ideas. So I'm going to focus on just being organized. Like if you don't know who you're going to call today, tomorrow, you lost. You know, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's just like, you know, when, when I interviewed um, – Joe Jardine, you know, mindset coach. And in my closing question, I go, hey, if you are a um, kick-ass loan officer and you've got a big meeting with a realtor, you know, a whale, or, or let's say you're, a, you're an athlete and it's the state championship game, you know, what do you, what do you do to prepare to kill it at that big meeting or at that big competitive sports event? And he's like, it's not what you do that day. It's what you did before. It's what you did the night before. And, and yep. so, you know, when it comes to preparing to win, you know, if you're like figuring out what you, who you're going to call today and it's today, you lost, you know, you, you need to make sure that you, you come into the day, you know who you're calling tomorrow. So when you're booking the day, it's, you have those calls and, you know, a lot of people and use their CRM and, and I know in the call with Wally this Tuesday, he uses Jungo and they talked about how it's organized and he just, he just knows who's going to call. I'm going to call my annual reviews. I'm going to call my realtors. And I'm organized to just start my day making calls. And, and I'm, I'm organized and I'm time blocked. 
Like when I interviewed Josh Metal, his entire team time blocks from nine to 11 to make their calls. When I interviewed Wally, they're time blocked from, I, can't, I don't know if he was two to four or three to five, but it's, for him, it's the end of the day. But if, if you're not well organized on who you're gonna call, and if you are not time blocking consistent disciplines that you execute five days a week, you lost. You, you will not optimize your success. So that's, that's, that's it for my rant on this. Um, this topic has taken 35 minutes. So I'm going to wrap it up unless Jen or Michelle want to want to add on to it. No, nope, I concur with everything. Okay. I agree with everything. It's good. Okay. So I, I did want to do a topic on the wealth team because Wally Elderberry is just killing it with this wealth team leadership, but maybe we'll get to that today. Maybe we'll do that in another call. Uh, if you have not listened to the Wally Elderberry interview called wealth team leadership, I mean, it's, it's a valuable call. I don't care whether you're a hundred million dollar producer or whether you're struggling to close two loans a month. Uh, I would highly recommend you listen to that. Uh, but let's, let's transition to your topic, Michelle, because you, you know, before this call, you made a post on the power of no. So why don't you, why don't we kick that off and talk about that as long as we, we have time. Sure. Um, so I did post, um, I am. I know I am not the only one feeling this. The our business is starting to get with with them stating that they're not going to raise interest rates. It's creating a buzz again. We've got that first sheep that's gone through that cattle door, and now all the rest of them are coming behind it. And so it's coming like like hotcakes. I mean, we're. I mean, I'm literally. I have my answering service on four hours a day because I can't take the phone calls in right now. I've got to. I've got to be. I'm very organized. So if I get interrupted with beeping in phone calls. I get distracted and I don't get to finish what I'm doing. And so I get off track, but so, and with the possibility of refinancing, you can imagine the amount of businesses double what it normally would have been in a normal market. So how do you protect yourself? How do you, um, it's scary to say no, it really is. And I will tell you, it took me a long time to be able to say no. And Last week I said no, the week before I said yes when I should have said no and I'm paying for it right now and my team is paying for it right now. But what I wanted to remind everybody is just be, understand where we're at in the market. Don't try to get the deal in the door because you need that deal in. Make sure it fits, that you're gonna serve the client well and you serve your partner well and create that raving client afterwards. Um, because the damage that is done by that one loan that you took in and overpromised and underdelivered um, could be a, a career killer or a deal killer for that specific area. And if it happens to be a big whale realtor on any side, they do talk. So just make sure to have the courage to say no or to sit there and say, listen, this is a complex file and your expectations of closing in 15 days with a holiday coming up is, is, it's unrealistic. Uh, we'll be happy to do what we can to help you. However, I can't commit to a 15 day close on this type of file and let the agent go elsewhere because on my example, they went elsewhere and it is not going well. They're 15 days past due. But, you know, I do my normal check back with a client to you know, say, I'm sorry, we weren't able to help you. And he said, it's been a nightmare. And he said, I should have stayed with you. I should have listened to you. And I should have not gone elsewhere because this is not, it's not going well. And every, because my wife and I don't sleep at night. And I said, I'm really sorry about that. I, I wish I could help you. I said, because is there anything can you do? Can you close in 15 days now? And I said, no, the time frame is still the same. I said, I'm happy to talk to your lender for you to see if there's anything I can do to help restructure the deal. But at this point, if we were to take it over, it would still be you know, up to 30 days. I love, I love that topic. I, I want to pile on to this whole power of no. And, and so guys, hope you heard that because it is the, the salmon are running, bears don't sleep, and you need to make sure you don't grab a poisonous fish, you know, like, you know, because that's going to take you down for the count. And so that's, that's kind of the metaphor I heard from Michelle, is like, don't grab that poisonous fish because that's going to take you out of play and for all the other reasons. But, you know, there's other, there's other no's that need to be had right now, you know, because, you know, my you know, late friend Ron Quintero, you know, that I think I, Jeremy heard that quote from me. I think I heard it from Ron, but you know, he, Ron was also famous for this whole thing that know the difference between 
busyness and boozeness, you know, and it's, it's so easy to like, just be busy all day long, keep your mind busy, keep your activity busy, but you're doing things that don't generate business. And Jeremy Forcier just joined us. What's up, my brother? You're on mute. Not now. Not now. So, so we've got uh, Jeremy live, and uh, I don't know how much of the call you've heard so far, my friend. But Just a little bit. Michelle, you're killing it. Love it. Love the, uh, love the approach of keeping it personal and fun. That's awesome. Did you get to hear about the winner of our 3010 contest is going to get to spend a day at, with Michelle and yeah. hang out with her and her horses? I did. Brush the horses, q and A. I I love it. I think it's really cool. Cool, man. So, so Jeremy, just knowing that you've heard some of the call and you're, you know the topic, any, anything you want to bring to the community right now? Um, <laughs> no. Uh, yes, I want to bring everything. Um, but uh, I was literally just on the call for that portion. So uh, the only thing I would say uh, to bring to the community right now, you guys, is that I feel like we have three choices right now. Uh, and this is just from talking to a lot of loan officers, people that work with me. And quite frankly, most of them are flailing. Okay. Even if you're a loan officer on this call and you work with me, it's not personal. I love you, but you could breathe right now and get loans. That's a fact. And I think that we're all creating this thing in our head that it's, it's really hard and it's competitive and it's whatnot. I think we have three choices right now. Uh, number one, and I have these written down. I'm going to grab something and show you. So I, I sent this to uh, some people that I'm mentoring right now. It's like a chain letter it was sent to me. So this is a greatness tracker. It's what I use to track activity every week. And on one of them, I wrote down on the greatness tracker, I choose to fail this week. That's one choice. You can choose to fail if you want to. You know what you have to do. You know how many people you have to call, who you have to go see and whatnot. The second one, so this is another greatness tracker, right? I just wrote on it, I choose to fill my greatness tracker up halfway with activity and leave the other half for my excuses. That's the second choice you could make. You could phone it in. You could call a bunch of people that you can't help. You can call the easy calls and not ask for referrals and not go after different business types. And you could make a bunch of excuses. Or third, which is what I choose, is I choose to crush my goals, fears, competition this week by 10X, okay? So I think that we have three choices to make right now and it's real simple. Okay. Number one is that we can choose to fail. Number two is that we can choose to phone it in and lie to ourselves and just make a bunch of excuses as to why we're not doing well. Or number three, which is what I want everyone to choose. It's what I choose. Okay. Is to absolutely crush your goals, crush the competition, crush your fears and get out there and get after it and have some fun. I mean, it's, it's an awesome time to be a mortgage loan officer right now. Um, I'm really enjoying myself just from a sales perspective. And it's a hot, listen, it's hot out there, okay? Refis, sure. I still haven't even really targeted refis, Dave. I targeted six um, in the last week. I got four appointments out of the six. I'm still focused on purchase business. Um, but we're going to have this opportunity extended throughout the rest of this year, in my opinion. So crushing it this month. I hope all of you guys are crushing it this month. Happy to stay on while I do some TCAs here in the background if anyone has any questions. I love, I love that. So let me jump on this real quick. I mean, we could just drop the mic. That was such a powerful one, two, three punch, brother. Uh, so, so one, I would love it if you would take some pictures of those, text them to me, and I'm going to put them in the group. I'm going to write a post because that was just so powerful. And, folks, I don't know if you, you caught it, but this is basically the 3010 contest that we're doing. You know, I mean, the greatness tracker is basically counting how many calls did you make, how many meetings do you have. I don't know that it has total cost analysis on it, but the, the 3010 contest is 30 calls a day, 150 a week, 10 TCAs a week. And, and, and you, you could choose, you know, I love the way you did it. You could choose to not play the game. Yep. You could choose to play the game half-assed, halfway, and – you know, have a lot of reasons that you couldn't get it done and you could choose to just absolutely slay this game. And, and, and I've, we've, we, you know, Wally Elderberry has put in a thousand dollars. The winner gets a thousand dollars. The winner gets a gift from Todd Bookspan that we don't know about. And the winner gets an hour with me and an hour with Jen. 
And if you like horses and you want to go hang out and become friends with $100 million producer Michelle Town, guys, we, we're giving it to you. So, so play the game. And, and Jeremy, thank you, brother. Yeah. Appreciate you. My pleasure, man. And thank you for all that you do. And thank you for everyone who's sharing. That's why I hopped on. I love learning uh, ways to sharpen myself. Iron sharpens iron. So super grateful. Yeah, well, it's, you know, and, and just a reminder, folks, this is the Mortgage Coach community. How many communities out there have leaders that just pop on like Jeremy Forcier and regular weekly guests like Michelle Town and Jen Duplissis? So you are in a great community, but you're only going to get great value out of it if you tune in. And more importantly than tuning in, you take action, you know, because we don't want to just be Netflix where it's like you're watching it, I'm entertained. I feel good. I got some good ideas. No, we, we want to create content that you take action on. You take that idea, you put it into play. So Michelle, anything you want to throw on the, on the fire and then Jen, I'll bring you back into the conversation. Um, well, hi, Jeremy. Nice to, I, I love watching your videos. I watch them at night, so don't worry. Um, I want to show something, you know. They, again, they, put, they put her to sleep. She watches them to put her to sleep. Yeah, this is my... Uh, again, this is my day, and you notice I track everything. This is a normal, average day for me. This is a normal, average day for me. This is what I track. So people that don't think that they need to track their stuff and count it, think again. I mean, these are, yeah, right? If these are, we're, we're, we're 100, I mean, Jeremy's much more higher than I, but we're $100 million producers, and this is what we do, not including what our back-end CRM is doing. So... Remember, don't think you're too good to, to do this or to write down your leads and don't think it's stupid because I, I don't care if it's stupid. I'm, I'm pen to paper. I have always been pen to paper. It, computer stuff doesn't work for me. I don't remember it, uh, but that's me. Figure out your learning style, but have something that you're tracking and making yourself accountable to yourself. And I love it. See, I love it. Look at Jeremy. So this is great. The other thing was Darren Hardy, because this is a, you know, insane productivity. I think it was. Tuesday or Wednesday's um, beginning was you were, if you put on your piece of paper that you were going to fail, you were going to fail the rest of the week. Um, you have the power to say, I'm not going to let this happen. I had an incredibly hard March, a lot of power struggles, a lot of things going on. And by the end of the week, um, and I don't cry much in this business, but I was in tears by Friday of, the week before and I took this last weekend and just didn't do anything. I had to refresh and re revamp and relook at what happened. And one of the things that happened was I told myself, crap, we're failing. And what happened was we didn't fail, but we sure, we sure didn't do it with, with ease and peace. And, you know, on Monday morning, I woke back up, got on back with the team and said, I'm really sorry because I did this to us. I am the one who set that tone and I am sorry. And it's not going to happen again. And I said, if it happens, you guys need to pull me out of my, you know what, and make me accountable to be from having a bad day, send me out, fire me for that day and make me go take a break and, you know, go do something fun. But the power of saying, yes, I will do this and not letting things get to you. Um, sometimes it's easier said than done, but um, knowing your limitations is, is really important. So I've got a couple, I think, really important things to say. And then, Jeremy, I want to bring you back in because I want you to add on to this. And then, Jen, we will get you back in. We've still got 10 minutes here. So, one, I want to make sure that you guys get the most value from this call. So Jeremy showed his greatness tracker. Michelle showed her win by noon tracker. Uh, I want to get some photos below of what your week looked like. So... Remember, we're driving this contest. Obviously, I want you guys to play the contest and enter it, and I want you to report your results. But more importantly than that, whether you're playing this contest and you're hitting those numbers or not, take a picture of however you track success. I'm going to create a thread in a few minutes when I'm not talking and thinking. I want to be present for you guys right now. And, and share your results, whether you're proud of them, you know, whether you're in number one, number two, or number three, Let's get a thread going where we share our results and hopefully we'll have some people in there that will inspire us and lift those results. But however you track it, win by noon, greatness tracker, yellow sheet of paper, take a picture of how you, how you document 
your clo- the close of your week or whatever you want to send us. So that's important. And then I'm going to say something to Jeremy. I want you to follow this because um, I gave the hardest um, speech of my life on Sunday. Uh, it was actually harder than the one I did when I um, spoke at my dad's, um, you know, whatever you call it, the, the eulogy for my father. I spoke for Ron Quintero and uh, we lost Ron Quintero. I did a, a call for him a few weeks ago. But Jeremy, you don't know this, or maybe I told you, I don't know if I told you. I, that post you did where you said, hey, the three most powerful phrases are, I love you, I'm proud of you, and I'm sorry. That post inspired my closing. You know, so I had 10 minutes on stage to you know, share my thoughts of Ron. And, and, and here's the deal, guys. You know, Ron, of all the friends I've ever had, I've never had a friend that said he loved me more than him. So, I mean, he was full of love. He told me he loved me. I told him I loved him. And we had a lot of love together. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a business friend tell me he was more proud of me. And I told him I was proud of him. So he said those things a lot. But you know what Ron never said? I'm sorry. And, and he had, he was one of those edgy friends that probably should have said he was sorry more than any friend I've ever had. And, uh, you know, and then in his closing days, um, you know, he took his life. And he, I know he never said he was sorry to himself. You know, so the power of I love you, the power of I'm proud, the power of I'm sorry is huge. So, Michelle, you know, I got a little deep on that. So, I mean, I took it to another level. But I do think those three phrases are so powerful. And, and I, I want you guys to be successful. So a lot of you folks on this call, like if you sucked last week, <laughs> dude, short-term memory. I'm sorry. Own it. I sucked. I didn't kill it. Let's start Monday and kill it. Jeremy, anything you want to pile on? You're muted, brother. Besides getting all choked up, uh, <laughs> that like from you saying that, it, 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 it's true though. I mean, here's all I'll add to that, you guys, is number one, uh, it's very easy for me to give you guys objective advice on here. I am an effing train wreck, just like everyone else. Okay, like emotionally, all of that. Now I have extreme resilience, that is true. I have extreme uh, self-awareness, which helps me, but I'm still a psychopath and I mess up all the time. Um, so I'm sorry is easy for me because I mess up all the time. Okay. Um, what I'll say is that stop beating yourself up because everyone else is doing good enough a job at that. Everyone's always trying to beat you up. You don't need to beat yourself up about anything. Um, so yeah, just make sure you love yourself and RIP. I say it all the time. I coach a lot of people in the industry and whenever they're talking about, Oh, last month or this or last year. And gosh, when I look at this, I always tell them, stop it. That's dead. That's buried. That's gone. That's done. It doesn't matter. Uh, We all have the ability to do great things right now in this moment. So just focus on what you're going to do today. Um, Plan out your week. Execute on a high level. Give people great advice. Um, Something that I I did recently, um, Dave, Michelle, Jen, all of you guys on here, that I think is really cool is that I kind of have like a why, but my why... I compartmentalized and I started doing them for the different areas of my life. So I could get clear, like when I'm at work, what's my work why, for example, right? And I put just a little note right by my phone. So it reminds me when I'm- Whoa, 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 hold that, hold that steady. We want to see that, buddy. Sir, I can read it to you. Um, I memorized it. So um, it's to impact and improve the lives um, of others through responsible homeownership. Um, I believe that good people deserve great advice. Okay, Mm. so that's my work why. The reason I put this right next to my phone is because there's plenty of times where I want to rip someone's head off on the phone or I want to tell them they're being an idiot or like they're just not getting it or I don't want to make a phone call because I'm feeling depressed and fat because I ate pasta the night before. Like whatever. Like like there are plenty of times I don't want to do stuff where I want to behave poorly and I always want to make sure that my conduct is in alignment with my character or what I want my character to be. So I think that um, if I can give you all a quick tip, just spend five minutes. It didn't take me very long to come up with this. Put it on a sticky note by your phone. It will make your calls easier. When I look at it and go, I want to improve the lives of others, 
the responsible home ownership, responsible keyword, give advice, have an opinion, have an opinion, tell someone like, Hey, this is a bad idea. Hey, I wouldn't do this. Hey, I wouldn't refinance right now because you're going to save $9 a month. Hey, I know you I wouldn't refi and save a hundred dollars a month. It's going to cost you 14 grand. Why don't we wait till there's a better opportunity, right? Responsible home ownership. And to remember that good people deserve great advice and everyone's a good person. Okay. Everyone's a good person deep down. And so I have to give that same advice to someone who's irritating to me just as I would uh, to someone who's very easy to work with. So I would say, just give, give it a try. You guys, it's really impactful. So I'm going to start another thread. So one post to post your, your um, weekly or daily activity and another post to take a picture of your work. Why? What is your work? Why? Post a picture of it down below. We'll put both those in the group. Super powerful. Hey, wanna... uh, the only other thing that I would show, because people ask me all the time, I'm sharing my screen. Yep. People always okay. ask, well, how do, you, how do you time block? Well, there you go, guys. These are, this is this week. As you can see, there's lots of stuff on there. And that is very important to do. So it doesn't matter if you use a notebook, paper, if you, whatever. Like I track all my calls on a piece of paper and whatnot. And I take my appointments from here and put it on paper. I like that feeling like Michelle was talking about. Um, but here you go. It's really simple. Book appointments with people. You can book. I mean, some of these days yesterday, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 appointments booked. That is good. Okay. Book calls with clients. Take control of your time because you can control it and manage it really well. Boom. That's so powerful, brother, man. I am such a gift to have you jump in at the last minute like this, man. Thank you for that. Uh, put a guys, I got to go. Have a great day. See you later. So, so we're going to wrap this up. We got some homework for you. Share that. Share, share your why. But hopefully you got value. If you got value from this and you're watching the recording, give it a like. Share. I, I mean, this is a call that many of you should watch with your team. If you're a branch manager, you know, this is worth scheduling a one-hour meeting and watching it with your team and then talking about it. And, and there's a lot of people on this call that you, you have people that you need to apologize to. And, and more importantly is apologize to yourself. You know, like those, those three phrases, they are so powerful when you say them to other people, but they are even more powerful when you say them to yourself and you mean it. Like, do you love yourself? Like, it, it, and, and probably if you're not crushing your goals and what you know you should to do, you're not as proud of yourself as you want to be. So, so hopefully, you know, the gifts that we're giving in this contest this month will, will just kind of be, they'll be an extra motivator, but hopefully you guys will get serious on asking those three phrases to yourself and you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll say them to a lot of folks. So Michelle, or not Michelle, I'm not, we're going to give Jen the closing thought because we've both been talking quite a bit these oh, last no, 30 no, minutes. No, 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 you no, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You don't have to. I was, I was just reminded of a Jim Rohn quote, which is, um, if you don't discipline yourself, everyone else will. And um, I, I only wanted to say, <laughs> I know it doesn't really, we're, we're kind of getting heart centric here, and I don't have enough time to go into that spew. But, um, you know, I think it's really, really important that you take control. And I know Jeremy said that but we have to take control of our process and our in our lives and everything and so my point of view is a life with values adds value and so if your core value is to be with your family and then I'd have to ask you then why are you working till 11 30 at night right if your core fan one of your core values is being ethical and you aren't you have to really challenge this. You have to really, really look at, at your values um, to move forward here. And part of that is that when you have a life of values, you add value everywhere in your life, finance, health, like, you know, Jeremy was talking about finance, health, business, relationships, etc. Get a grip on what you want so that you can share it with everyone else. It's sort of that mask thing, right? Like take care of yourself first so you can take care of other people. And we're giving you the tools to take care of other people right now. Make 30 phone calls a day for the next 10 days. Do 10 TCAs so that you can add value to your life. Yeah. And my, 
my closing thought is now I actually know why Jeremy is one of the top 10 TCA creators out of over 10,000 loan officers. I mean, the man has done over 3,000 total cost analysis. And it's because the word advice was in his personal business why. And he wants to give good advice to good people and he believes everybody is a good person. You know, so, so many people like, oh, I give this person the, the great advice, but I, this guy, you know, wasn't gonna shop me and barely qualifies for a loan. So I'm not gonna give, I'm gonna give different people different levels of advice. That's why Jeremy does, you know, over 3,000 TCAs and everybody gets one because he, he has a business why that has that in it. And, and it's pretty clear he's committed to his values. So guys, I hope you got a lot of value from today's call. Remember, give us a like, share this with your mortgage friends. The Mortgage Coach platform is technology. That costs money. So if you're not a member, there'll be a link down below to sign up and become a member so that you can give families a total cost analysis. But Mortgage Coach is more than a technology company. We are community, you know, and we take this community of the nation's best loan officers. We do calls like this on Facebook Live. If you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join our Facebook group. More importantly than joining this Facebook group, engage, ask questions, answer questions, share success. Uh, and, then, and then we take all that and we turn it into sales training. And, and again, our philosophy is sales training is advice training. Like we believe if you become great advisors, you'll kill it with selling. So that's the Mortgage Coach platform. If you're looking at our Facebook group, we, we visualize that for you to, we wanted to be more clear around what we're doing and why, and hopefully it makes you more clear about what you're doing and why here. So have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. This call Thank is you. a Thanks, wrap. Guys. Appreciate you, Jen. Love you Appreciate you, Michelle. I love you all. Hey, I love you and I'm proud of you. And I have nothing to say. I love sorry you, about. I'm proud of you. And I'm sorry for anything. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs>